Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back. How um, awesome is this? Now, what just happened here? Something very strange happened. I don't seem to be able to. Oh, wait. If I lose you, I'll be back. Live chat. All right. There we go. There's the live chat. Technology is my friend. Okay. <laughs> Hey everyone. Welcome back. So here we are. Here we are. It is the second of March. And um, where where I am, it is trying to it is trying to snow. It's doing its best to snow, but it's kind of warm for snow. It's um it's right at the freezing mark. So we're sort of getting little white things and then suddenly not, and then and then we're getting rain and then we're not. And so it's one of those unsettled days. And I, I thought, how fitting, how fitting that the that the temperature and the, and the weather and everything on the outside is a little unsettled when so many things are unsettled on the inside, right? So I have an odd, what the hell is wrong with my hair? Sorry. <laughs> Blonde moment, but you know. So I, I was over on Facebook a minute ago, uh, kind of to do a teaser, and I wanted to talk about time, because one of the things that happens to us that we are always fascinated by, is um, the fact that sometimes time seems to go by in a blink, and other times, like at the dentist or uh, taking your final exam or um, having um, the doctor at the clinic dig a planter's wart out of your foot, time slows right down, <laughs> right down. And it's awful. It's just awful because when, dear God, is this going to end? And then all of a sudden it speeds up. And I've, I've always wondered, and, and maybe you have too, if it was possible that time kind of does a loop the loop or whether it's our perception, it, whether we are so caught up in what we're doing that we stop staring at, at the, <laughs> you know, when you put water on the well and then you stare at the water and nothing happens, it seems that nothing happens for ever. And then all of a sudden it's boiling. Things like that are very puzzling to me um, because I, I'm always looking at, the world from two points of view. And, and I don't know if you do this in your work, in, in your lives, but I'm looking at everything from through my eyes. And then I'm trying to understand what it might be looking like from the audience's eyes, from out there, from their perspective, or not even all the way over there, just another few jots over here, just a couple of degrees. What, what perspective does to our sense of the passage of time? When you're driving in rush hour traffic, <laughs> it seems to slow right down. When you're having an animated conversation in the car and you're driving on the highway, it goes by in a blink. And so is it, is it us um, or not? And then, um, I, as, I, as I said on the Facebook video, the teaser for this, um, my good friend Matt Broder, who is um, involved in the Pivotry Project with me, he's uh, he's a, he's a an American from uh, the New England states, and he's a part-time musician and a, a, a part-time bus driver and a part-time dad. And in those three different areas of his life, he's actually full-time in all of them. Now that I think about it, <laughs> um, time passes very differently. Uh, there's always been this joke that musicians live on four four time. <laughs> And bus drivers live on, you know, hurry up and wait time. And dads are just juggling flaming chainsaws all the time. And he, he found this amazing conversation and quoted it, put it on Facebook. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to put it into, into the Pivotry book and I'm going to credit the author. What I wanted to do was talk about it here very briefly because I think it's fascinating about the way we are coping with all the things in our lives right now. So um, it's, it's, it talks about time and it says the ancient Greeks had two different words for time. So the ancient Greeks, that's a while ago. And what the two words were, the first one is chronos, 
And the second one is Kairos. Now, Chronos is spelled just like chronology, um, C-H-R-O-N-O-S, and Kairos is K-A-I-R-O-S. Now, Chronos, I'm going to read this, okay, and I, I don't use my glasses. It's the time we can observe from the ticking of a clock or the phases of the moon. It's where our English words chronological and chronicle come from. We don't talk about Kairos time as much, but we've definitely felt it. It's the flow states, the moments where time seems to stop, the feeling that anything is possible and the world is suddenly open to you. You've felt that and you've been there. I know it. We all have. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more. It's the feeling that you have full freedom, agency, power to do what you're meant to do. It's what we mean when we say this is it. Aha, this is the moment. Now, Kronos time is measured, but Kairos time is experienced. Isn't that fascinating? Here's, here's the, the, <laughs> the thing I wanted to talk about. Pivotry in motion, this, this phrase that I've coined, this concept I've defined, to me, and all the information that I have pulled together from all the people that I've interviewed, a pivotry experience, a pivotry moment is a moment out of the ticking clock kind of time. A pivotry moment is what happens when this present moment and a memory moment collide. And it happens without us really being conscious of it because all of our memory moments are stored in our subconscious. They're all filed away somewhere. And, and the, the struggle that we have is that we don't know how to access those memories on demand. They just pop up when we least expect them. And we don't know, we don't know how to get rid of them when they come, and we, we, we don't know how to get them when they won't come. So the whole idea behind researching this and looking at the science and understanding how the different parts of our brain connect, my job, my, my goal, my purpose in this is to give myself and you a greater understanding of the, of the freedom we have and the power we have to channel the part of us that is best suited to own the moment. The, the different tiny fragment of us that we've, we've, we've met before, we've known before, we've developed before, that we used before successfully and then set aside and filed that we can draw on when that kind of moment comes again. It's not a conscious thing we do. Conscious takes longer than subconscious. When we can stop fetching about it and stop obsessing about it, usually the right part of us, the right fragment of our, of our many, many facets just arrives, steps in and says, I got this. Don't worry about it. And, and takes over. Now, sometimes creatively, <laughs> it's not the right one that steps in. And I have had that happen to me so many times. And it has been the source of much of my comedy. And I think what is so important right now, with so much still swirling around us, and so many ripple effects of things that, that are not helpful, they're not, they're not designed to empower us. When we focus on them, we get stuck. It's like stepping into quicksand. If, if we're not careful, it sucks us in and we never move forward. So my goal with pivotry, and it is slowly evolving as I'm talking to people and I'm listening to the comments and, and different crazy, amazing people are reaching out to me, is that I want to take this on the road. I, I want to do these virtual uh, conversations. I, I am building not only the collection um, that people can, can own, but I'm also building exercises that people can do to get good at finding and retrieving these parts of us when we need them on demand because there is a process and it works. I know because I've done it for years and years and years. On top of that, though, I happen to know from personal experience 
that there is nothing like the face-to-face -face in the same room, in the same place, for that, that magic, that chemistry to go shazam when we really meet. It's, it's fabulous that we can Zoom. It's fabulous that we have YouTube. It's fabulous that we can download the e-books e and the audio books and the podcasts and we can listen to them when we go jogging or doing the housework or whatever. But there is nothing like face to face. Nothing. Why? Because we're tribal. And because our subconscious brain only knows the safety of that close connection when we're all together in that safe place. So my goal this year is three things. And this has been evolving over the past few months that kind of had to slow back a little bit because I, I know if you've been following what I've been doing, I had to, I had to give my creative stuff a smaller window of my time because I committed to a friend that I would be there for them when they were going through a health journey. And it, it's been five months and it's not done yet. We're, we're in a different place, we're in a different phase, and we're in a different chapter. And I now have more time to focus on and devote to this. So, as we talk about time, <laughs> that song, we're here for a good time, not a long time, I'd like to be here for both. <laughs> and I think that may be the, the way of connecting our concept of Kronos and Kairos. Kronos is the length of time. Kairos is the quality of time. How do you feel about that? I think that's pretty magical. I know that when I go to these live events and I meet all of you, uh, the, the days, the weekends, the evenings when we get together, my gosh, they go by like that. And, and it feels like all that buildup, all that all that looking forward to and waiting and, and, and doing and being, was was forever and all of a sudden it's now and then it's past and you're thinking um okay we, we need to do that again and that's that's that wonderful um waving shifting shape-shifting aspect of time so here's what here's what i want to talk about and here's what i want to do i'm just checking to see where we are okay perfect we have time we have time so one of the things that has happened to me as a military brat. And I know I'm speaking for a lot more people than people realize, the general public realizes, is that military brats struggle with a very specific concept of time. And it's this, while the general population, let's call, let's call the general population the civilians, the people who, tend not to move around so much. Not, they're, they're not nomadic. They're not gypsies. They, they, they may move a few times, but it's not on a regular rotational basis. They have a sense that we've always done it this way. We always have breakfast and lunch and, and, and dinner or supper or the midnight snack at certain times. And then there are people who say, well, you know, if I'm on the road or if I'm suddenly uh, sent off on a temporary duty a flip, um, I'll be eating, I'll be uh, living in a different time zone, everything will be turned on its ear, and I may not be able to have breakfast, lunch, supper, dinner, midnight snack. They may be called other things in other places. And we, as military brats, learn to adapt. We learn to understand that in different places, time has a different value. And one of the one of the one-liners I used to say when I was doing stand-up comedy, is that for military brats, we struggle to understand the difference between forever and 430. Because our forever is often cut into very short moments of time. We are here for as long as we're going to be here, and then we get our papers, and off we go. And that becomes our new forever, until it isn't. And it is almost impossible to explain that to people who have, you know, generations upon generations grown up in the same place, who have always lived in the same time zone, who have maybe crossed borders briefly, but only on vacation, who feel a constant. Uh, that if, if they were trees, they would have a taproot. Whereas people like me, we have surface roots. 
you can pull us up and replant us. We're like weeds. <laughs> we grow well anywhere and quickly. And so the other quality of a, a different comprehension of time is, is related to where we feel we belong and fit. You know, the, in addition to we can't tell the difference between forever and 430, we're, we're also never sure where our house is because we have a very clear memory of the last place. And if we're not paying attention, and I don't know if, if any of my military brat people are watching, how often have you not been paying attention and accidentally turned down a street that look, reminds you, you know, it was the second left turn and that your house was on the corner, except, except you're in a different town and it's 10 years later. Those things happen to me all the time. Because why? Because my memories are overlaid on each other. And sometimes <laughs> my subconscious brain is saying, would you give me a minute to sift and sort and find the one that's relevant? So this concept of time and how fast it's going, how long it's taking until our birthday, how quickly it's going when we're on a date with somebody magical, how soon it's over when it's Christmas. These things are confusing. So in the concept of pivotry, what, what I am leaning into and what I'm talking about is a shift, a complete shift in our perception of who we are and where we are and how long we have to live this moment. We can shift it in the same way that our experiences in Kairos time shift automatically without our conscious involvement. If we stay present, and this is very important, if we commit to staying present in the moment for the moment, we get to experience this moment in all its full flowering, in all its perfection, it's in all its utmost damned astonishments. If we insist, if we frantically say, no, 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 I can multitask, I can do all these different things at once. If we're scrolling on our phone at, while we're at dinner with someone saying, yeah, no, no, I'm listening, and we're not. And yet we were looking forward to dinner with that person. We can't resist trying to be in another place simultaneously. And what we end up doing is stealing value from both. What we need to learn to do is commit in the moment to the moment to be here now 100% unconditional. Because each moment is fleeting. And the longer we can stay focused on it, the longer we can cherish it, the longer we can pull the joy and abundance from the moment, the richness of those memories will last us a lifetime. And I know, if you stop and think about it, you know what I'm talking about. You can remember your first car. You can remember your first kiss. You can remember your first time on your bicycle without the training wheels. You can remember the first ace grade on a test. You can remember the first time every time because they stay with us unless we allow ourselves to be distracted and live a mediocre life. When, as Shirley Valentine says, there was so much more we could have lived bigger lives with. So pivotry in motion today, focusing on time and our understanding of it, is our ability to experience both. We, we need the precision of knowing when to be there and why, because this is the way our society is built. We also need our ability to own and cherish the moment once we're in it. 
and pull all the juice and all the magic from it. And take that moment and be grateful for it. To write it down in the later folder and go back and say, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget who you were and who I was and how we were together in that moment in time. That is the magic of pivotry. We can remember the slices of who we are and where we were and how it changed us forever. Isn't that incredible? I think so too. And I'm a little weepy today for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I was, I was told by someone that, um, I'm so glad you're here. I was told by someone that today is an emotional day, something to do with uh, solar flares or something. And if that's the case, it's working. In any case, before I go, because, oh my goodness, we're almost at half an hour. Before I go, I want to say two things. Spring is always a time of uncertainty. We're eager for winter to be over. We're eager for those, those, those last unsettled winter feelings to go away. We're eager to open the closet, open the storage locker and pull out the cute clothes. We're eager to turn the soil and start planting things. And sometimes we jump the gun because we're eager to feel the warmth of the sun and the warmth of the next season, the next chapter in our lives. What we need to do, even in the last stages of winter, we need to find reasons to be grateful for those moments, to be listening for the, the random things we hear people say to us and about us, to thank them for caring, to thank them for walking with us in a transitional time. We need to do that for them and for us and for our journey forward because our forward journey includes our ability to pull from our memories all those slices of us that served us well back in another time. I hope I wasn't all over the map today. I hope I wasn't dancing back and forth through time on this. I, Before I go, because this has been fairly heavy, I do want to leave you with <laughs> a funny story <laughs> that uh, happened to me in my childhood. And um, it was my third birthday. And we had to hold off on uh, celebrating because one of the, the, the little kids who was invited to the party was late. And when his mother arrived, she had this story. She was she was puffing and panting, and she had this little kid firmly by the hand. And he was, you know, this, and the mother was distraught. And my mother was saying, well, we've all been waiting for you. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm just wondering where the cake is. Anyway, what had happened was the reason, the reason that we were all living on borrowed time was that that child had discovered the magic of raw eggs. So he would have been three. And when he, so his mother got him dressed and said, now don't get into any trouble. I'm getting dressed. We're going, we only have a few minutes. And the kid says to himself, awesome, heads downstairs. And while mom is upstairs getting beautiful, he's opening the fridge and he's taking out the carton of eggs. He's got on a brand new little t-shirt and everything. He takes out and goes, splurch. And goes upstairs to show his mother. Who is it? Ah! <laughs> ah! And rushes into the bathroom, rips the shirt off, goes and gets another one, puts it on him and says, don't get this one dirty. Anyway, he went through the remainder of the eggs. I think he had run out like he was down to the last T-shirt when they finally arrived. And his mother had had to slow down her getting ready, ready so many times that he was he was having the time of his life. She was not. And the rest of us didn't really care. All we knew was that he's finally here. And now it's cake time. <laughs> so what what that little story, <laughs> that little story was that, that I think I've always remembered with a smile was that that child was living in the moment 100% all the time. 
he knew there was going to be cake. The thing is that right now, right now, there were eggs. And I mean, really, <laughs> I mean, cake might not happen, but I know there's eggs. <laughs> and I've always wondered whatever happened to him. I've always wondered what kind of person he grew up to be. I, I've always wondered if he would have a completely different take on time <laughs> and realities. Okay. So now that I've taken you way, way back into my childhood, I want to bring you to the present. And in this present moment, we are beginning the month of March. We are going to be having, if you're in the, in the right part of the world, daylight savings time, we're going to be doing something with clocks. It's going to screw us up for a day or two until we get sorted out. And for those of us who are traveling back and forth, March break and whatnot, we will be also dealing with, with time changes and time zones and, and all of that. We will be starting new jobs. We will be um, having new adventures. And each one of these things alters our perception of time. And as these things are beginning to happen to us, and who knows, maybe they'll start today for you, wherever you may be. Remember this. The later folder that I talk about frequently is designed to help us capture, retain, and cherish all the moments. All the moments, no matter when they happen. And give us the power to call them back anytime. Remember that. Because it's exciting to realize how much power we have to be in so many places at once. How much power we have to experience the march, the minutes, the seconds, and the hours, and at the same time, experience the wonder and excitement and magic of discovery, the experiences that change our lives. We're very lucky, you and I. And I am very lucky that you choose every time to join me. It changes everything because it means the world to me that we're on this journey together. So the weekend is upon us. Much to do, spring cleaning and all that, sifting and sorting and setting aside. So until I see you next time, think about time. Savor it. Don't waste it. It's fleeting and at the same time eternal. And we need to understand our power to live in both those realities at the same time. Okay? Be good to you. You deserve it. And remember to hug your loved ones. Thank you. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye for now.